Welcome to Always Real Talk's nonprofit sector. Today we are so happy to be joined by the A Street Development Corporation. It has been located on A Street and down on Pennsylvania Avenue for a long time. We're here with the CEO of the A Street Development Corporation, Ken Brewer. And he's been joined with Marcia, Dr. Marcia Brown uh, from the Global Scholars Foundation. Welcome both to Always Real Talk. Thank you. Glad to be here, Tom. Good to have you in the studio. I know that. Uh, Ken, we, we've been around for a long time. I know you're a native Washingtonian uh, and a graduate of D.C. Public Schools. And to be on A Street and to see what's taking place on A Street, I know it's something that you've played a role in for a number of years. Tell us a little bit about A Street and, and what you guys do and why you guys are so important to our community. Yeah, the A Street CEC has been around since 1984 and it's primarily been a catalyst for the economic revitalization of the A Street corridor. Uh, we've had a supermarket, we've had other large stores that have come and gone to A Street. And at one time it was even a food desert, but now we host a Whole Foods. We have a giant. And these things are relatively new to the corridor and its renaissance. But the corridor has briskly redeveloped itself, and we have only been like a catalyst. Oh, absolutely. And for, for those that don't know, when you're talking about economic development in the city, A Street's always a name that comes up, especially if you're talking about A development on A Street. I mean, I know at one point you couldn't do anything on A Street without A Street Development Corporation being a part of it. And let me just talk about our CDCs and what roles they play, but how impressed I am with the history and the performance that A Street has, has played, not only to what they see as it relates to on the streets of A Street, but what you've done as it relates to the community and the schools that you've, you've been a part of, that you've contributed to, to the Global Scholars Foundation, to the John Wilson Scholarship Fund, which we'll be talking about. What are some of the challenges that you experienced early on uh, with A Street? There are, people, there are people right now, they're walking outside, they think that this looks like this all the time. So the the no biggest idea. problem that you've had is access to capital. It's been difficult for H Street over time to borrow enough money to do the projects that it has done. Now it's not that problem because the market has really changed. The demographics have settled in the minds of some people that significant investment is being made along the H Street corridor. So no longer is there an access to capital problem. We get all the capital we need. And now it's more of finding the spaces that need to be developed and making certain that we do the appropriate level of marketing to attract people to want to live there, play there, and be at home. Now, you, you guys expand clearly out past A Street. Uh, can you talk about some of your early on investments sure. that A Street made just that people may not know, whether it was the Auto Zone or the building that's right next door at the, that's here? Tell us a little bit about yeah, some of The these building stories. directly across from Whole Foods is called John A. Wilson Plaza. And it was a 360,000 square foot development that had a full service supermarket called Mega Foods. Most people might remember it in the late 80s. But it was developed, it died, and came back differently than what you see now. So that portion of the development is gone. Uh, the property was owned by Jair Lynch, who has subsequently then sold half of the property. And now you have two office buildings, you have a CVS, and you have some other critical retail that's come to that block. Absolutely. And you guys are just was involved with another major project uh, on 13th and H. Yes, at 1300 H Street is the Baldwin, named after James Baldwin. It's 33 units of 100% affordable housing. So if your income is between 30 and 80% of the area median income, and area median income in D.C. is roughly, uh, metropolitan D.C. area, is 107000 So if you make between thirty dollars and $80,000, you get qualified to have a residence in there. Now, unfortunately, uh, they're all gone. The reservations were out the top of the hill, and we now have 33 brand new residents on 8th Street. Now, that's 100% affordable. 100%. And I know at one time people thought you just couldn't do 100% affordable on 8th Street, but you guys have partnered and built something that's 100% affordable. How quickly did those things go? Uh, they, they were gone within two months. Wow. And, and we have to give a plug to the, the Bowser administration and past administrations who actually have put money where their uh, mouth is. And that is, they put money in through the Housing Production Trust Fund. They competitively bid this former R.L. Christian site. So we had a clear opportunity to develop affordable housing. When most people said, I don't think you're going to put affordable housing on 8th Street. Because if you go to the Apollo there, there are two bedroom units at $5,000. Well, I know a lot of people thought about that. And when they thought when the Christian Library uh, was 
was the RFP came out to get to kind of get rid of it and build something else there. There was a lot of concerns that they were going to get this market rate rate housing, and that was gentrification. So to see that the organization working with the administration mm -hmm. has done a phenomenal job to make it 100% affordable. I mean, I think that's that's hats off because I think there are a lot of people that probably didn't think that was going to happen, and it, act, and it actually did happen. Uh, what are some of the other exciting things? I know Rhode Island Avenue, you guys have a, a project there. Yeah, 2121 Fourth Street. We Fourth developed Street. 116 units of 100% affordable housing in a multifamily building, and we had partners, the ENG Group, and they were able to help us construct this $35 million project uh, relatively fast. But it had been a former D.C. government on site, and we competitively won the rights. And that's, I think that's also uh, good to note that when you look at government competitive sites and partnering with CDCs that are out here doing good work, you get 100% affordable, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's a, that's 100% affordable. That's 100%. Like, most of you, you know where it is, is, right? Near Rhode Island Avenue on 4th Street, that beautiful uh, complex you see there, that's an that's a 8th Street developed building, 100% affordable, 13th and 8th Street, who would ever thought it would have been 100% affordable, this 100% affordable. I mean, those are the things that, uh, that, that I think people are saying are excited about A Street. What's, what's new? What's the next thing that, that you guys are working well, on? Well, our next big thing is on Benning Road. We're going into parts of the city that most people have not. And we're going to develop more uh, properties along the Benning Road and the Bladensburg Road area. Because we think it's important to go where places that need to be developed. And if, how can people find out a little bit more about A Street? They can go to our website at hstreetcdc.org, or they can call us at 202-544-8353. Great. He, I'm glad to talk hold to you. He, he threw out a phone number. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people come on the show, but no people throw out phone numbers and say, hey, he said, gladly we talk to you. Well, let me tell you, when we come back, we're going to talk about a couple of things that H Street is doing. One, we know that the Global Scholars Foundation is it's something that's been, you know, at the heart of soul of what you've been able to provide for our young folks here in the District of Columbia. Then we're going to talk about, of course, the John Wilson Scholarship and all the kids that you've been able to put in, in college and, and really make a big difference, not only in their lives, but in their families' lives. We'll be right back right after these messages. Here at Always Real Talk, we are committed to giving all the exposure to our local and small businesses, supporting our entrepreneurs that are out here in the community making a difference. And today, as you can see, we're supporting the one and only District Certified. We want to make sure you go out. Go to his website. What's your website? Uh, www.districtcertified.city. Here we are. Young man out here making a difference, creating a brand, but not only a brand that people are wearing. If it's always real talk, you know it's going to be real. Welcome back to Always Real Talk. We're here with A Street Community Development Corporation, and we're just talking about the phenomenal things that A Street has done just from a development perspective. But, man, I think people just don't understand the community part of A Street Community Development Corporation. Tell us a little bit about that community side that you guys do and why you do it. Yeah, we have been advocates for the community when there have been zoning issues that the community has been raised about. We've gone and testified before the council. We've also been able to do the full breadth of community development, which includes uh, real estate as well as economic development. So some of the properties that we've been involved with include the Walmart that's right there on 8th Street. Our partners wow. and I were able to pull off the Walmart right there near Gonzaga. Uh, we've done commercial residential, retail, and we look forward to doing even more. So the, the, the Walmart, the famous Walmart that everyone goes to on 8th Street, which you can always find parking for, by the way. I don't think I've ever been there and couldn't find parking. So, you know, go. I think everyone goes there already. Lumber there is a bunch of people there. You guys are involved in that particular Absolutely. Development. So that's a, that's a retail project. That's right. But you guys have developed clearly 100% affordable housing that you guys have done. Right. And you guys have done some mixed, mixed, uh, development too. I think that's, that's true. Fourth Street's mixed development. Right. As well as the John A. Wilson Plaza was mixed. So and it had retail on the first level and residential above. And what part of the, you work with some schools. 
I know you work with a couple of elementary schools. Well, most of the DCPS, DCB, DC charter schools we work with, because that's where we get all of our applicants for the John A. Wilson Scholarship Program, which is named after John A. Wilson, former chairman of the city council, in which every year we give between five and seven scholarships to uh, needy youth. So when you give the John A. Wilson Scholarship Fund that you have every year, how much, how much, seven or eight students get received? Between those? five and seven five students seven. get it. And how much money do they get? $10,000. $10,000? Yeah, wow. it's spread over a four-year period, and yeah. the students are very happy to get it. They write an essay, they're interviewed by a panel, and we select them. And how long is, what year is this going on with the John A. Wilson Scholarship? How many years uh, the John A. Years? Wilson Scholarship is more than 10 years old. 10 years old. So you guys have been giving out five to eight Ten thousand dollars. Let's just say that's eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I went to DC Public Schools, so I can count very well. So eighty thousand dollars a year that you give out in scholarships to DC Public Schools. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the, use some of the proceeds for what you do from a development perspective to then provide that. Right. All right. And and John A. Wilson Scholarship. When does that come out? That comes out in early January. The applications are due back in March, and then we have an award program there about June. About June. Yeah. So I think this is John A. Wilson time. Then. That's right. This is John A. Wilson time. Go to the website. Check it out. What is the website? They can go to, they can go to 8streetcdc.org. All right. You see it on the screen, 8streetcdc.org. Check it out. The John A. Wilson Scholarship, just one of many things that the 8th Street Community Development Corporation is doing to just impact their community. We'll be right back. My name is Darren Stewart. I go to Thurgood Marshall Academy. My name is Kayla Williams, and I'm a freshman at Temple University. The program has helped me by opening my mind to travel more. The Challenge Challenge Now GSF has helped me um, just open my eyes to different cultures. It has me gave me the opportunity to, uh, to learn and speak a different language, and then experience that, and then use that language in um, another country. And just realizing that. There are people out there who are not as fortunate as I am. And so it makes me want to help them. Just knowing that you have to always um, be open to new things and never judge anybody. Welcome back to Always Real Talk. We're still here with the H Street Community Development Corporation. We've learned a lot today. We've learned about their H Street's historic uh, past performance in creating retail, 100% affordable housing, its ability to create scholarship funds, the $80,000 a year over the last number of years to stu students right here in the District of Columbia. And Ken, we're back now talking about the Global Scholars Foundation. Tell us a little bit about the Global Scholars Foundation and Dr. Brown, how you play a role in this with and why was it important to, to create it in the first place? It started off as a community global initiative, and we thought that China was not the only place in the world. So we decided to enlarge it, as well as take some of the students who look like me to places that they could see people that look like them. So we've been around the black diaspora of the world and have taken kids to uh, uh, South America, to Brazil, to South Africa, to Morocco, to uh, China, of course. And now this summer we'll be taking them to Ethiopia and Egypt. And we were very fortunate to be able to hire Dr. Marcia Brown back in 2010. And she has been the leader of this program for some time now. And uh, Dr. Brown, tell us about the, the program in terms of, it's a year-long program? Year-long program. What do they do? Year. So they go to school and they do this? Yes, yes, yes. It's a big commitment. It's, it's a huge commitment, but we tell the students up front during the interview process, if you devote this time to us, we'll make it worth your while. And I think we hold true to our word. And when you say a year long, what, what does that mean? Like, so, what do they do on a monthly basis? Okay, so I'll, I'll take you back to the beginning of the program. We normally uh, start sending out applications in the fall, October. So we started the process in October of 2017. Okay. So by January of 2018, we started getting applications. By March of 2018, we had 
interviews, we selected the students. They came in for an interview, then we selected them by May because if they register with Summer Youth Employment Program, the DC Summer Youth Employment Program, they can get paid to work with our site. We are a host site. Okay. So we like to let the students know by May if they got accepted so they can also work and earn money for being in our program. So May of 2018, we accepted this new cohort. So from June of 2018 until August of 2018, that was phase one. So they were with us six weeks, five days a week. Uh, depending on your age, you were either with us 20 hours a week or 25 hours a week, according to the summer youth employment schedule. During that time, um, the kids, it's kind of like school. It's, it's a little rigorous. Um, but we teach them soft work skills like how to build a resume, how to interview for a job, how to dress for a job. Mm -hmm. The students, each student has to read a book and do a book report. We take them to... Oh, the, they have to read a book? They have to read a book. They, uh, they now, the read, book, the, 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 way you, the way you get your book is, uh, so for the first week of work, uh, every student who's ever been through the program and people who know me know I am a stickler for time. So that first week, you know, you have to be at work on time. You, you, have, that's, you just have to be on time. So if you had the first week a good uh, record, a good start off of being on time, then you got to pick the popular, the fun books, the short books, whatever. If you had some issues getting used to getting to work on time, then you had the leftover books that were usually young, long and harder to read. But nevertheless, the students still had to do a book report at the end of the summer. Wow. Um, that's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. So they were with I us. I, I think I might have made it. <laughs> <laughs> but we also do improv. Okay. During the summer, they did three classes at the Washington Improv. Uh, we go on field trips. Every Friday, we went to a college in a local area. Um, they... You say local area. Uh, from here to Baltimore, so okay. we went to uh, Catholic, Howard, American, UDC, Trinity, um, uh, Bowie State, Morgan. So any school that's in a local DMV area, every Friday we would go to a different college. They would eat lunch at the college. We would buy t-shirts, which they still wear on a regular basis. Uh, they would meet with other kids from the college who would give the tour and answer any questions about college life. Um, they even had a fun day at Sky Zone at the end of the summer. So we're not all work, but we're very serious about what we do. So that's the first phase. That's phase and one. That's, and that's the summer phase. That's the summer phase. Okay. So then they take a little break, get started in school, and then we start phase two, which is the longest phase. Phase two goes from September of 2018 until June of 2019. So we're almost done with phase two. So phase two, I tell you what, hold that thought. We come back. We're going to talk about phase two. We, we got phase one. You got to read a book. You got to come there on time. <coughs> it sounds very serious to me, but we're going to talk about phase two, what phase two is all about, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk a little bit more about you know the financial aspect of what you teach our young folks. We'll be right back right after these messages. Always Real Talk. We're here at DC Pit Stop and we're here with the Global Scholars Foundation. We're here with the chairman of the board, Kenneth Brewer. A good welcome, Ken. Thanks for coming on. Glad to be here, Kwame. Dr. Marcia Brown, the executive director. Thank you. And Anthony Bowling from the Anthony Bowling Group, who is the title sponsor of this wonderful event, the inaugural golf tournament. Welcome. Thank you, Kwame. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let me tell you, the Global Scholars Foundation is do, they do some phenomenal work They're out in the community, not only just traveling and exposing, exposing our young kids to foreign countries and things that they probably would never see if you didn't give them the opportunity to do it, but also teach them about financial literacy, teach them about how to actually go after financial aid, teach them about just how to be productive citizens, not only here in the District of Columbia, but wherever they go. Let me ask you a question. Why is this golf tournament so important? It's important because this is a fundraising effort for us to fully fund the Global Scholars Program. Uh, every year, H Street Community Development Corporation has to write a significant size check. And we've chosen to try and make this um, financially feasible for the corporation to continue on. And that is to build a war chest so that it can afford to have these types of programs. Well, let me tell you, your vision of just continuing to make sure that the foundation continues to exist is extremely important and the ability to put your mouth, your money where your mouth is and say, hey, we're going to fund this thing and now we're just going to come up with creative ways to keep it going. 
Right. Most people always talk about starting, but they never start because they never want to put the money to actually start. So hat is off to you and your whole board for seeing this as a, a true value to the community. And I mean, when you start talking about a title sponsor, Mr. Bowley, I mean, you're a title sponsor, you step up to the table. I mean, that speaks volumes. It's the first one, and, and this is the first inaugural one, so you right. haven't done one before with this group. Tell me why it's so important for people to get involved and to come out and to support the event, and when is the event? Well, Kwame, thank you, and you're absolutely right. The Anthony Bowling Group uh, is a local full-service real estate brokerage firm here practicing in the Washington, D.C., Prince George's County area. And we, too, admire the work that A Street Community Development Corporation and the Global Scholars Foundation are doing with our young urban youth here, our young scholars, where they are expanding their vision beyond their zip codes. You know, we all, as Washingtonians, think that D.C. is the epicenter of the universe and the world, but this program... It is. It, it is. <laughs> hey, Washington, I, I get it. But this program is taking those young scholars and really showing them the world. Uh, the Anti-Bowling Group wants to be a part of that. It's something that resonates with our mission to help uh, individuals uh, acquire real estate as a part of their missions and, their, and supporting their organizations. And so the opportunity for us to raise $75,000. So that's the goal. Is the goal to raise $75,000? Our mission with Great. this golf uh, event, the first and our, our annual uh, golf charity fundraiser, May 20th at our club, at my club, at the Country Club of Woodmore, uh, is to raise $75,000. Now, that won't cover the total budget to take 20 members, 20 kids in this cohort to Egypt, Ethiopia, and Rome. But we think it's a great start on our part. And so we're excited to be a part of it. Now, when you start talking about that, it's May the 20th. May the 20th. Is that at Woodmore? It's at Woodmore Country Club. And you'll see it. You'll see it on the screen. As you'll see, we'll post all the information that can show you not only where it is, what the date's on, but how can people get involved? Like, what are you looking for for other sponsors? You're a title sponsor. Is there sponsorship still available? There are always opportunities to support the organization as a sponsor, as a title sponsor, as an individual whole sponsor. Just to come out, if you don't play golf, and I'm not an avid golfer, but I do drive the cart well, and others can too. I'm going to stay away from you. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> So, so, so what does it cost just to play? We want to come out there and play, and I just want to take, I mean, what does it cost? Is there any individuals that can come out and play? What does it cost? No, because we want to encourage persons to come out and bring someone. So, 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 so what do you do a foursome? What is it for? You can bring a foursome, and the sponsorship is $500 for okay. you and a foursome to come out and enjoy a round of golf and the opportunity to do a hold-in-one where you have a chance to win tickets to next year's Final Four. Oh, it's so next year's Final Four. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, as, right, a whole, not, as a whole in one opportunity. And Woodmore is a, a great place. It's a great Woodmore golf is. Place. That's and, right. And let me tell you, to all my friends out there who already play there, come on out, support the organization. I'm going to be out there. We're going to be out there talking to folks. Uh, Dr. Brown, when you talk about these students, because this golf tournament is not just about taking kids to these overseas, right? It's, it's more inclusive than just a trip. Is that right. correct? Right. Yes, exactly. The program is a year-long program. So these kids have been with us since last year. The trip, the international trip, is the very last thing that we do. So we will take an international trip this summer for two weeks, uh, as Anthony said, to Rome, Egypt, and Ethiopia. But our program is, it consists of financial literacy, college readiness, and language and cultural training. So they've been working with a language coach for the last nine months uh, on every other Saturday uh, for three hours. So we do a lot more than travel. We're just not you know, a fun travel group, although that's part of what we do. And we're very excited to have this golf tournament to offset the cost so that we can continue to do what we do in the District of Columbia. Now, that, that's a commitment from our young folks. I mean, any time that you're committed to come out on Saturdays and spend three hours, for nine and months. And they learn Arabic. They learn nice. Arabic. And that's that's phenomenal. So we're going to go out. It's Woodmore. If you're out there and you play golf, come out. If you don't play golf, make a donation. If you can be there, be there. We want you to come out and support this. It's a good event. They're doing great things. It is Global Scholars Foundation. 
title sponsor, Anthony Bowling, the Bowling Group, along with uh, H Street Development Corporation, who has done a phenomenal job making, this is not like the first year trip. No. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get back, just about the foundation itself, what it does, a Street's not only commitment, but what they what they're doing to create a better pathway for our for our young folks. Mm -hmm. All right, it's always real talk. You know it's gonna be real. Come out May fourth. Look at the screen. May twentieth. She just corrected me. May twentieth. <laughs> May twentieth. It's on the screen. You can see it. Come out and support it. It says charity, but it's charity for a good cause. Look forward to having you. Bowling with the Anthony Bowling Group and I want to invite you out May 20th to come to the Country Club in Woodmore to support the Global Scholars Foundation's first annual charity celebrity golf tournament. We're going to be raising $75,000 to support GSF as they support 20 scholars here on their trip this year to Rome, Egypt, and Ethiopia. Again, I'm Anthony Bowling with the Anthony Bowling Group. Come support us and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Because when we hear about development taking place in the city, we always hear that, man, we can't build affordable housing. It just costs too much money. But you are in partnership and you're doing 100% affordable units and you're still finding ways to fund, you know, community programs that are affecting our young folks. I mean, that's, the hats off to, to you, your board, and everyone that's continuing to make those tough decisions to continue to stroke that check to make sure that these other programs are, are viable. Um, when you start to look at the sponsorship itself, you can see it on the screen, tell you what the sponsorships are, want you to go out. If, if there's other things you want to sponsor outside of the golf tournament, I know that you guys have a, a dinner for when all of the young folks leave the pro graduate mm -hmm. from the program. That means that they have went through, you said nine week, nine months? Nine months. A nine month program and they stuck through it. Right. And they finished and they completed. Then there's a graduation program that's always sponsored for that. I know you have your language, a language coach. Instructor. Right. Language is short, looking for anyone who wants to step up and be a sponsor to our language coach. Anyone that wants to sponsor and has great access to any airline that's out there, we'd like to hear from you. I think you would want them to reach out. To you. I know some folks out there that are watching and they got airline people, friends that they know that are always looking to do good work. Rewind us back, listen to what they've been able to do, and step up to the table. Let's see if we can help our young folks, you know, give them a brighter life, give them something outside of what they're used to seeing. And that's what I, I like. It's not the cream of the crop, it's not the top. It's not the who's who's children in Washington, D.C. This is just people that are in D.C. public schools and D.C. public charter schools that you're making a difference in their lives. So we really appreciate it. Why don't you give us the, the, the you gave us the number last time. Well, give us the website they can go to. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, globalscholars.foundation. Globalscholars.foundation. You see that on the screen. A Street Development, Community Development Corporation. Their information on the screen. I want to thank you both for coming back. We're looking forward to having some of those young folks in here come on the show and talk about their, their experiences also. We look forward to that real soon. And well, I mean, on behalf of the East Street Community Development Corporation and the Global Scholars, we want to thank you and Always Real Talk because it has been real talk today about what we do for our citizens. But no, this is, there you have it. This is our Always Real Talk nonprofit sector. We want to highlight our nonprofits. You're going to see our non nonprofits in the city. Uh, that you're going to be looking at their advertisements that we're going to be having. We're going to make sure that all of our nonprofits get some good spotlights for those that we can because they're doing some amazing things in the community that we don't, that some people just don't know about. So if it's always real, you know it's always real talk.